Hi everybody, I'm Tracy from Absolute Panda Tour Team. Today we are bringing you an introduction of the, our new itinerary, the classic birding tour in Western China. And we are honored to invite Philip He, the founder of Absolute Panda Tour, who is also a professional bird guide, to share some of the essential parts of this birding tour with our nature and bird lovers. Philip, thank you for joining us. Hello everybody, this is Philip He from Absolute Panda. Well, before we start, I'm going to introduce a little bit more about Philip. Philip is a half-combat Tibetan who was born in the beautiful Gansu Tibetan Autonomous Prefecture in Sichuan Province, where there were fantastic nature resources and Tibetan minority culture. From the deep love of the land he was born and raised, Philip started his guiding career 15 years ago focusing on endemic wildlife like giant panda, alpine bird, and local Tibetan culture. I would say Philip is an excellent guide in every aspect. He's first very knowledgeable about nature and cultural resources in China, and more importantly, he extremely cares about the need and interests of our guests. Well, in addition, Philip is also an accomplished photographer. So today he's going to show some of his images and many stories behind the pictures during the tours. Philip, welcome. So I'm so happy to have this chance to show you the wonderful resources in Panda Habitat. Please look at this map. So for our trip, we will go through maybe the most diverse uh, areas in whole China. So this place belong to what we call the Hinduan Mountain area. It is picked by Conservation International as one of the 26 hotspots in the world. So in this trip, we will not be uh, rewarded with uh, some wonderful birds, but also we'll have a uh, lot of chances to see great natural sceneries and when we are birding on the top of the Bala Mountain or when we are driving through the Tibetan Plateau or when we are searching birds in the pad habitat. Uh, so there are lots of things we can see in this trip. So now I would like to give you some ideas what we can see but always, I need to I, I need to tell you, let you know that actually it's impossible for us to show everything we can show for you in this trip. So what we can do here is just give you a sampling of what you can see and what this trip look like. And after my introduction, you are welcome to ask any questions, and you can also just send your questions to info at absolutepanda.com. So and the first highlight of this trip is panda. Sure, it is extremely difficult to see panda in the wild. Well, there's an excellent place where we can see pandas living in natural environment. That is a Chengdu research base of jungle panda breeding. So we we'll spend uh, one morning there to see the different uh, panda of different ages and also we will see jungle pandas and we will learn a lot about uh, pandas and including why we call it a panda. So panda is quite unique and well in this trip I think we will start with a lot of uh, very interesting panda knowledge and uh, when you are uh, enjoying the pandas in the enclosure. Well, this is something f scary, but actually this is something we saw last May. A moon bear or black bear. And uh, we just saw this bear on the other side of the uh, river, a small stream. Well, we can't promise that you, know, you will definitely see this animal, but we can see in this trip, you have chance to encounter those animals. 
Well, you can't believe this picture was taken by some visitors to this park called Tang Jiahe Nature Reserve. We are going to visit. Well, we also can't promise that you will see this animal because it's extremely hard to see this animal in the wild. But when we are in their habitat, anything can happen. Nothing is impossible. Well, for our trip, we do not we do not set the our goal to particularly search this animal because we respect them. We want to take a different way of travel, so we want to enjoy whatever you can see. So in this trip, we'll no longer just run from place to place just to take the bird names. So we will come down and enjoy all those trails of nature in a very enjoyable way. Well, this is uh, another group of monkey called a Tibetan macaque, and uh, once you see them, uh, you need to be careful. They are not scared of people, but most of the people are scared of them, so they may attack people because sometimes they, they are being fed by the local people. So whenever they see people carry bags, so they will, well, they will just make use of every chance. So you can see a uh, mummy. Uh, Tibetan macaque with a baby, so you you have a lot, very good chance to get a similar similar shots. Well, this is something uh, very uh, special. It is called a Sichuan Tekken. Well, this is also uh, not very difficult in the reserve to see. Uh, actually, I took this photo only about. Uh, 10 meters away from this animal, so most of times, sometimes I they are just about three or four meters away from me when I was driving there. So you never know anything can happen. So only when you travel, go to the place, there are lots of chances. Well, we label this trip as a classic birding trip because in this season and in this trip. We can see huge amount of endemic birds. You can see nowhere else. So this one is a very beautiful bird. So we call it a bullfinch, gray-headed bullfinch, a male bird. And we also have a chance to see this great bird, which is called a Chinese mono, which must be one of the biggest. A bird in the wild in China, uh, beside the peacock. So this is a very rare. Well, in this place, you can imagine we can just stop by the side of the road and have a chance to get a, a very nice view of this wonderful bird, Chinese mono. Well, this one is called a blood pheasant. Just you can see the vent of this bird. Uh, looked like the color of the blood. Okay, so called the blood pheasant. Well, this bird can only be seen in very high elevation, mostly above three thousand meters above the sea level. And well, this colorful bird is called a uh, golden pheasant. Well, this bird lives in much lower elevation. So in Tang Jiahe Nature Reserve and in Wulong Nature Reserve, we'll have a good chance. To get a nice view of the male bird, which is one of the beaut most beautiful birds in the world. Well, this is something uh, unique and special. It's called Timnix trackpan. It's uh, uh, normally in the winter time, it is easier to see the bird, but in the summer time, it is extremely difficult. They are very very shy. Well, this is Rufus breasted accenter. Uh, Accent is not a very big family, but uh, we will see some uh, nice accent, just like upper accent, uh, maroon backed accent. We'll quite we'll see quite a number of them in this trip. Tit, uh, cold tit. So in China, we have a huge number of tits. So in this trip, we'll see 
more than 10 different kinds of teats, including cold teats. Well, this trip, in this trip, we'll also go through two unique Tibetan areas. One group of Tibetan is called the Jiarong Tibetan, which you can only see in Sichuan province. So you can see the Tibetan people turning the prayer wares in the early morning. So you can see uh, their architectures, their unique costumes. So we will show you more w during this trip. Well, this is another exciting bird. It's called White Wind Grosbeak. And look at the beak of this bird. It is, I think that, that is the reason why it is called Grosbeak. It's got a huge beak. Well, this is very typical scenery on the Tibetan plateau. Well, you can imagine on the plateau beside the wonderful birds, just like uh, white brow teeth warbler, um, black necked crane, and you also see lots of uh, very beautiful alpine flowers. I think the scenery of the plateau will be very memorable part of your of your travel you know memory well this bird can most found can be most found on high elevation area rufus lake uh, snow finch uh, it is one of the six snow finches found in china but are pretty common on the plateau well this is a uh, jam it is the only crane in the world that live on the plateau. So we call the black legged crane. Well, Tibetan people call it fairy crane. There are lots, lots of uh, touching stories about how Tibetan people and those beautiful cranes live in harmony, how local Tibetan people help them. So we will share you with you those stories when we are enjoying those wonderful birds on the Tibetan plateau. Well, this is a uh, another scenery you can see. Actually, on the Tibetan plateau, you will see lots of uh, uh, pika. Well, for the pika, it provide it, it it is you know the pika itself serve as a very important food resources for a huge number of animals and vultures and well this one is called polka so you can see a polka uh, actually is ho getting a pika and taking it home so there's a good chance you can also see this animal in this trip this is very typical scenery in the tibetan area on the tibetan plateau you can see there's a monastery surrounded by the village houses. That is a very typical scenery. For the Tibetan people, Buddhism is an inseparable part of their life. So always, when you see the village, you see a monastery. And always, monastery is the most conspicuous buildings in that area and a most beautiful and a ground beauty in that area just like the religion but the buddhism and well this picture show you a wonderful relations between the tibetans and the local wildlife well this one is wild though you can see the bears because people love them they feed them they hunt the bear on you know, on the wild deer so you can see my clients taking a picture of this deer. Well, this you can sh see no fear from the deer because in the Tibetan area, people love wildlife. So they provide them food and they never kill them, hunt them. So the wildlife already accept the human beings as friends. Whenever I see this group of pic this picture, 
I feel very top, very much touched, and I think the world will be much nicer if all the people, all every part in the world, have their similar scenery, and the wildlife take the human beings as a friend instead of as enemy. Well, we will we will be able to live in much nicer environment. Uh, here is a Tibetan monk turning the prayer wells. So in this trip, if you have interest in Buddhism, I think you will see a lot how strong the Buddhism has influenced local people and also their way of life, their attitude toward life. So this is something will make your trip really special. Here is a we what we call a stupa forest in Wachie. So in this place, you'll see hundreds of stupas built to commemorate the Panthan Lama, which is another who is another living Buddha, not a share that has the same status as the Dalai Lama. So in 1988, the Bantan Lama came here and uh, gave a lecture to the local people to celebrate this event. So local people built huge number of stupas and uh, well you can see the lady is doing her uh, prayers in her own way. Well, this is a bird. Actually, we don't see the bird on, high, on the plateau, but on the in the forest, in lower elevation, we call it white eye. It is quite small, though. From the picture, we find it's a pretty a big, but actually, it's a quite small bird. There are three kinds of white eyes in China. Well, you will have chance to see at least maybe both two of them. If you're lucky enough, even all all the three of them. Well. Another charm of this itinerary is the wonderful sceneries. So, this actually is a lake in Jiu Zhai Gou, and we, we, where we will spend one day to explore the beautiful birds and the beautiful sceneries. And, well, if you have interest in learning photography, I will also show you how to make a very unique pictures. Can see here. You can see the the bark of the red birch, and with the gem-like pond as a background. So that will make your uh, picture very special. Well, water in Jiu Zhai Gou is incredible. I think you will never never feel tired of seeing enjoying the beautiful water in Jiu Zhai Gou. So, because of that, that place is known as a fairy land. So, I think you all really like this place. If you and uh, well, we have kind of saying when you come to Jiu Zhai Gou, you can use a third class camera to get the first class pictures. So here, there will be lots of uh, good pictures waiting for you. Well, this is another site in the same park, Jiu Zhai Gou. You can see the waterfall just spread out like a screen. This is one of my favorite waterfalls. And in front of the waterfalls, sometimes you have a chance to see white suit the deeper and some other teeth, just like a, a sooty teeth, Rufus belly teeth, those precious teeth in this place. And you can also have a chance to see Indian blue robin and even possibly rufous headed robin in this area. So there are lots, a lot more to be seen in this area. Uh, this is another typical scenery of waterfall. If you have interest, we can also show you how you use your shutter speed to create this kind of a special effect in your picture. Well, this is a, a 
Chinese endemic bird, but a pretty uh, not so difficult. It is called anert, nothing thrush. Well, we have to admit that actually the foreigners have taught us how to, you know, appreciate these birds because most lots of Chinese birds were named by either pan um, anert or reeves. Lots of these kind of so this one is called anert laughing thrush. And China is a distribution of a laughing thrushes a distribution center of laughing thrush. So you can see lots of laughing different laughing thrushes like a white brow laughing thrush, uh, giant laughing thrush, and anert laughing thrush, black faced laughing thrush. There's a huge number of laughing thrushes you can expect in this trip. Well, this may be something coming in your home because this bird has been introduced to your homeland. But I think it will be a totally different experience when you see this bird in its original habitat. So this is called a common pheasant or ring-necked pheasant. Well, you can see, though it is called a ring-necked pheasant, but for this subspecies, you do not see the white ring around the lake. Well, in the uh, another subspecies, you will see a white ring. That is how this bird is named. And this is a, one of the beautiful sceneries in this trip. And it, I think this is also in Jodago. Well, due to limitation of our space, we can't show you the another very important uh, part of this trip. The beautiful alpine flowers, the poppies, primuna, primuna. Well, this one is called a sorcery, and it is a uh, uh, aster, belong to aster family. So you will see a huge number of the uh, white uh, lo local alpine flowers. Well, this is a Chinese robin. Also, it's called a uh, red bearded neothrix. Well, this is extremely beautiful bird, and so anyway, we can, we just can't show you everything we can see, but we'll give you. I hope this short video footage can show you what you can expect in this trip. Thank well, you. Well, Philip, thank you very much for today to bring us so much highlights about this trip, and uh, here we got some good questions. From the uh, from our guest, which yeah. I frequently asked first, um, how is the weather conditions in the destination? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, for the weather conditions, you know, we are traveling in the mountainous areas, so we need to be prepared for all weathers. And in China, we have kind of a saying: the weather in the Alpine area is just like the cheeks of ch children. So you never expect, you never know what is going to happen. So we have, you have to be prepared for all weather conditions. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, second, uh, shall shall our guest concern about the the altitude, like in the mountains or in the plateau? Yeah, yeah. Actually, we also we are also concerned about this. Well, please look when you look at the map. Actually, we start from a lower elevation. So that is what we no normally do. We start with a lower elevation and we gradually move up. Well, if you always follow the suggestion of our guide and or of me, uh, I think it should be okay. But in case anything bad happens, uh, we prepared some oxygen just in case. Or if we find that it is very urgent, so we'll just uh, find a vehicle and then bring take you to the no elevation areas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, the last question maybe is the most concerned by uh, many foreigners traveling to China. That is, how's the condition of the public toilet in the remote area in China? Oh, that is a tough. Uh, that is tough. I think uh, when you travel, so just like the Chinese in and yang, you lose something. You get something. So when you travel in those very remote areas, you see some extremely beautiful stuff. Well, 
you have to suffer for a little bit. I would I need to be honest and say the toilet is not good. But we try our best to find the clean toilet. Well, because most Chinese use a squat toilet. So we always bring a toilet stand for those people who can't use it uh squat down toilet. So yeah. That's very considerate. Mm. Okay, all right. Um, thank you so much, Philip, for sharing so much information about this fascinating trip with us. And thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. For more information about the classic birding tour in Western China, please visit our website at www.absolutepanda.com. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. <laughs>